chicken wings. Chicken. You know there's going to be a shortage. I've heard that. You know, if we have hens in yards, we have people in the cottage industry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, those are pets. Um, I wanted to start with just touching on our new 311 app uh, yesterday. We, uh, on launch day, we had uh, more than 1,800 requests come in uh, to download the app. And uh, we're very excited about that. We hope that that mushrooms we will continue to download the app. And uh, we actually received 173 requests via the app yesterday. And uh, for the entire rest of the month of January, there were uh, 239 requests. So I think the uh, app is going to have a good penetration into the community. We hope people will, will use it. It's free. It's, it, it is very easy to use. The most important thing is, though, whether it's an app on your smartphone, an email, a phone call, you need to communicate with us. We can't fix it if we don't know it's there. A lot of people <coughs> try to communicate by Twitter with me about their uh, their pothole or whatever. Not the most effective and efficient way to get something to the 311 system because I have to turn around and offload that request to somebody else. And I actually don't check my Twitter feed constantly, uh, a couple of times a day. So. Again, urge people, don't, don't tweet me about your pothole. Get the app and send it to uh, 311. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about today is we did a release to council in a discussion yesterday of this, what's happened in the Higher Houston FIRST program. Uh, as of September 30th, more than 139 million of city business had been awarded to designated Higher Houston First firms, uh, sustaining more than 6,000 jobs. Uh, this encompassed uh, 895 formal bid contracts. Now, the interesting thing is we have vastly increased the number of firms that are Higher Houston First uh, eligible. So firms that are already doing business with the city have gone through the certification process to show that they are Houston firms so they can at least have the option, if they need it, to have uh, that, that extra leverage in bidding. But we've also brought in a number of firms that had never tried to do business with the city of Houston in the past, and, and that's a very, very exciting thing. But the best part is that the majority of our Higher Houston First firms did not have to fall back on the, uh, the benefit of being a Houston firm, the, the extra, extra uh, points, as it were, they actually were the low bidder and were able to compete successfully as Houston firms on their own. Uh, a reminder that the higher Houston first, depending on the size of the contract, you don't have to be the low bidder if you are within either three percent or five percent and are a Houston firm. But so we have more firms participating that are Houston-based firms that have never tried to do business with the city before. Most of the firms who are Houston firms that are participating are winning competitive bids and are the low bidder, but there were a significant number of contracts awarded to Houston firms that would not have otherwise gone. So we consider this a success uh, all the way around and hope that more firms uh, participate, go through the certification process. Uh, we want to increase our spend here in the greater Houston area, and this helps us uh, extend our reach out. It forces us to do a better job of locating companies who should be doing business with the city of Houston. But it, it's one more mechanism for Houston firms to decide that they might want to put their toe in the water if they haven't uh, already. What do you guys want to talk about? I'm here on, on Houston first. Have, um, one of the major <coughs> problems that a lot of minority firms have been having and even trying to deal with the city is um, the slow pet of the city. Once you win a contract, and how long it takes them to get, um, um, get paid on the contract? Have you improved that? Um, uh, yet? All firms get paid on the same basis. I know there is regular discussion.
discussion about small businesses and whether we can put small businesses on an accelerated payment schedule, and that is still under discussion. Uh, there are some other things, and, and uh, Felicia Wright, who's the head of the uh, Office of Business Opportunity, is here. We have a range of things that we are trying to do to help small businesses. We recognize that uh, sometimes getting a contract with a large government entity, we do pay, uh, but it, you're not going to get an immediate check when the work is done. They invoice and, we, and, and then we uh, send a payment. Some companies, they have to know, understand that that's part of the process and, and how long they they might have to wait between when they expend their monies and when they get reimbursed. Mayor, is there any way to compare these numbers to how much business the city would have done with these firms prior to this policy? It uh, actually, we have some. Uh, you have the press release. I think it's in there. Is it in there? I'm sorry. Um, it's a little hard to find with all these numbers. Uh, this, out of 68 prime contracts, 61 went to firms that had previously been awarded city contracts. And then the remaining seven contracts went to firms that had never worked for the city. And then there's an, also in there that um, uh, help me out here. I guess what I'm trying no, to get there, at there's, is there's, has this increased the overall no, amount of business that the city would do with local firms versus outsourcing it to other, to other places? Uh, Carlisi to come up here, but of that, I'm looking at. Um, well, the, there are multiple goals for the program. The direct answer to your question is that of 68 prime contracts that went to hard use and hard firms, uh, seven of those went to firms that had never previously competed, and uh, they actually went to firms where uh, we invoked the, uh, the percentage uh, benefit. The majority of hired use and first certified firms actually won their bids and simply heads up, they were the low bidder. And that's the most important part. We want to make sure that we find more firms so that we have an opportunity more, better to spend our money here in Houston. The goal is not to give uh, this benefit, the goal is to drive both sides to be more productive in terms of keeping our tax dollars here in this very area. On that subject, the balance of the uh, 80 to 20, basically, 80 to pay for a lot better than the person program, uh, is, that, is that suitable? I mean, obviously, that 19% represents <coughs> an, an extra cost to the city. Well, we would rather not have uh, we would lose. Goal is to always have Houston First uh, company uh, compete and win the bid straight up. The recognition by the state of Texas and by the city of Houston has been that it really does make a difference if you can keep your tax dollars circulating in the local economy. So we, we do it because it's important and it helps local firms, but really this is about broadening our reach and finding more opportunities to keep our tax dollars here. And that means that if we can reach out to local firms, get them cert certified so they're comfortable and they have that opportunity, and yet they win the bids without the assistance, that's the best of all worlds. Well, Mayor, um, this afternoon they're having the committee hearing about Chapter 42 and, uh, and the park and stuff. Obviously, you guys have done some of this stuff in the past. It's always very controversial. A lot of people show up and talk about it. Do you anticipate bringing any of those, whatever? Uh, any possible changes to account for some of those any time this year? As far as I'm concerned, the, the, the ordinance is where it needs to be. And I'm fully prepared to bring it forward, but I'm also not going to bring an ordinance forward that the council uh, doesn't support, doesn't understand. So um, this is a matter of one last, one last pass to council members to see where they are on the issue. Part of the challenge is that the vast majority of the folks that have been coming in want certain things to happen in the city that have nothing to do with this ordinance. I'm in great sympathy to their concerns. A lot of what they talk about has to do with enforcement. 
not what's in the ordinance, but things that happen after a property is, is built. And I understand their frustration, but it has nothing to do with the ordinance. And, and so, I, but I've been a civic activist, I understand. You have council members' attention, you have an ordinance that we're trying to pass, and if you can hold up that ordinance to get leverage on other things, you're gonna try to do it. Process doesn't offend me, but I'm not gonna bring an ordinance forward if um, we don't have consensus around the council table. Do you, um, and so you don't see the chapter 42 in the park in Chapter 42 is what you asked me about. Yeah. Do you think you'll have consensus at some point this year, or? Uh, well, not I'll give you the other half of the answer, and that is that uh, there are some things that we never get consensus on that we just have to stand up and take a vote on what we think is the best interest of the city of Houston and the future development of the city of Houston. I am comfortable with Chapter 42 ordinance as, as it is currently constituted. If there are amendments that council member can offer that will improve the ordinance, I'm certainly willing to consider them. Uh, and I will uh, bring it to the council agenda as soon as I see that uh, it has some chance to pass. Um, getting back to the 311 uh, app, which uh, is, an, is an excellent advance and, and much appreciated. Do you have it on your phone? Huh? I uh, said to everybody yesterday that I was going to have I tried to. There was an issue. I have a, a non-standard non cell phone, uh, but I did try. Okay. Um, but uh, the, the question is this. If there are thousands of more people reporting more potholes, leaks, and whatever, uh, but not necessarily more personnel to report them, is it, there a possibility that we could start missing deadlines and give more potential civil liability exposure to the city? Uh, no to the potential civil liability exposure. Uh, we, we have some limited immunity mm -hmm. civil issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the bigger challenge for us is mm -hmm. if suddenly everybody in the city of Houston started calling us and mm -hmm. saying, you know, there's a pothole at this address, mm -hmm. or there's a weedy lot at this address, or there's graffiti at that address, and we didn't have enough personnel to respond, then people would get angry at us. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have that problem mm -hmm. than what I have today in that citizens are constantly complaining about inactivity on the part of the city. We cannot fix what we do not know is there. Mm -hmm. And citizens will hit the same pothole day after day after day and never once call and tell us it's there. We mm -hmm. don't know. This is a really big city. So once we do know, then we have the opportunity to deploy resources. Uh, in 2011, when we went from a couple of hundred water main breaks a day in August to more than 1,100 mm -hmm. in just an explosion of, of water main breaks, we ran into that very problem you described, which was citizens were calling in about their water main breaks, and we did not have the ability to immediately address them. We went into crisis management mode, and we uh, brought in resources from elsewhere, brought the number back down. I am uh, not too concerned, again, that we're going to be overwhelmed because right now only 10% of the potholes we repair across the city of Houston, for example, actually are responded to because some citizen calls in. The rest of them uh, because we find out by other means. I mean, city employees are out across the city and they do report these things, but if only 10% of our repair notices come from, from citizens, that means that we're not accessing the, the eyes and ears that are out there all across the community. And uh, we're making it easier and easier for citizens to, to contact us. Citizens need to do their part. Thank you. Uh, speaking about Chapter 42 and enforcement and <coughs> things of that nature, um, you know, the, with the goal of spurring more development, outside the current urban area and throughout the city. Um, you mentioned that the neighborhood's Chapter concerns 42 about is not gonna is not going to spur more development. What we hope it does is spur a different kind of development. Uh, we are losing ground as a city in terms of whatever you want to call it, middle class, middle income, workforce housing. We have housing for uh, our working poor. We have a lot of high-end housing, and we're rapidly redeveloping the inner core of the city of Houston for high-end 
high density housing. But the, the kind of house that, that I grew up in, the kind of house that many of the working men and women in the city want to own close to their jobs is disappearing. If we can create more density, there is more opportunity for people to have the opportunity to buy a home, maybe a patio home, maybe a town home, maybe a single family home on a small tract and live closer to their job. Uh, these areas will redevelop. We want to see the potential of a certain kind of redevelopment. If you can't put more density in, you, and you want to make the same amount of money, you put a more expensive property in. On that point, though, um, with greater density, more structures, um, is it not the right approach to add uh, inspectors and people capable sure. of enforcing? I mean, is that part of the package? Is that being Chapter 42 is the, the development code. It is it's basically a set of guidelines for development. It has nothing to do with enforcement. <coughs> Enforcement is up to the city of Houston as we decide what the, the appropriate level of personnel is to respond to these issues. And, and in the dialogue I've had with a lot of the neighborhood groups, and I, I, I understand, I used to be a civic club president. You see something happening in your neighborhood and you want to blame it on Chapter 42. It's nothing to do with Chapter 42. It has to do with a property owner doing something that is inappropriate. For example, you can quickly and easily, just a few minutes drive from, from City Hall, find places where property owners have gone in and filled in the, the drainage ditches, uh, or swales in front of their property, or uh, posted no parking signs on their uh, fences because they want to preserve parking spaces in, in front of their houses, or the, uh, you know, the issue of what's called gang mailboxes. That's not in Chapter 42. All of those have other places in code and other enforcement opportunities, and I acknowledge that we need to, to get on them, and we are pursuing those as aggressively as we can. I remind everybody that we're coming off the, the, the worst recession in generations. Uh, we had significant decreases in city personnel. We're just getting back in where we can do the type of enforcement activities that we want to be known for. Uh, if you were listening to council members earlier, uh, the most popular thing we do right now is uh, is demolitions of, of bad properties. Uh, but we're doing a lot of innovative things, and uh, you've also heard a discussion of how we have transformed through the Department of Neighborhoods, how we respond to what are the major neighborhood issues, can we go in holistically, you know, block by block, uh, writing citations if we need to, but, but getting compliant. It has nothing to do with the development. Okay. Uh, but I want to make sure that Carlisi is over there. If you have, anybody has any questions about the, the Hiring Houston First program and, and what we're trying to achieve with it, the, the ability to win a bid, even if you are not the low bidder, but you are a Houston firm, is designed to be something that we use rarely but it is designed to be an incentive that opens up a whole range of, of other bid opportunities to various companies and to get companies more interested in doing business with the city of Houston. And Carlisi is in charge of that process. Uh, Mayor, uh, back to 311. Back to 311. 311 is one of those uh, magic numbers that the city has. And it's well, it's not exactly a magic number, but, but they are, they are, they they are they nationwide. Do, but I'm saying 211, 311, 911. What, what 311 in Houston, Texas does is like magic because you they work with you when it comes to getting understanding of the courts, um, about um, filing all kinds of different um, complaints about potholes and stuff like that. Anything so you want to fix or find out about what's going on in the city, three one one is the first place you should call. Right. And I want to I want to say this. And it's a question. When when the municipal courts put out an amnesty, um, why is it that they don't put out the full requirements of fulfilling the AMS. <coughs> because when you find out about the AMS <coughs> program that is happening right now, um, there's, a, there's a small clause that they will not, you have to qualify for the AMS and only those tickets or citations after um, before 2008 qualify. 
a direct answer to why that is why it's required. You have to ask uh, uh, the no, I'm saying, why municipal is courts, but we can't it? we can't stuff everything into the public announcement. Uh, one of the other things that uh, some people get caught on is that we also have a disclaimer in there that just because we're doing an amnesty doesn't mean if we don't if we, if we catch you out on the street that we won't take you to jail or boot your car or, or do a whole range of things. The amnesty is a courtesy, so it helps us clear some old things off our books. It does not mean that, that people don't have a responsibility to, to pay their tickets. Uh, we, provide, we try to provide as much information as we can, but we can't ever put everything in what we release. So now you're talking about the one thing, the qualification for the amnesty, which is only those people who have things before 2008 can qualify. I will ask, and I'm just making note, I'll ask why why that qualification is in there. Well, we need your good email to put your email to them. So. No, I got the email. I'm just saying. When you, okay. When you call well, the process the process the ordinance, why are these changes necessary, and are they any different from what state <coughs> law already does for these businesses? Yes, they are different. They are necessary. The most commonly stolen item these days when someone does a home burglary is, is jewelry. No one goes in and you know, wants to lug a flat screen TV down the street. They want something put in their pocket and quickly get rid of. And the vast majority of the jewelry that's stolen, precious heirlooms that, that, that people that are emotionally invested in, are melted down uh, within 24 hours. They're melted down and then the gold is shipped someplace else. I mean, it, it is a, it's a big business. These precious metal dealers, we buy gold, we buy silver that everybody sees, have popped up like mushrooms almost overnight. Uh, pawn shops are fairly heavily regulated by the state. Uh, these uh, gold buyers need to be regulated at least as much, but because of the, uh, this, the tremendous problem, not just we, but, but every city is having with the price of metal thefts, we believe that an extra level of scrutiny uh, may be justified. We did a similar process when the theft of copper pipes went into the stratosphere uh, to, to try to clamp down. And at this point, you, 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 know, you can steal gold and sell it more easily than you can steal uh, someone's copper pipes and sell them. What we'd all like to see is you know, precious commodities, whether that's a copper pipe, a piece of gold, or something else, that there be a level playing field. But absent the state taking action, uh, we're going to do what we can to protect the citizens of Houston. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think it ought to be. It ought to be lined up across all of them, and it ought to require thumbprint and uh, photograph. Uh, last question, we talked about joint booking center, that there could be a plan of action laid out to council uh, in January. We are still in, in conversations with the county. Uh, I will point out that, of course, there's a new district attorney over there, and uh, while it's primarily the sheriff, the commissioners, and the city, uh, the DA is going to have a role in this and has to be part of the conversation. And when things happen, we are doing things to take prisoners out of our jails. It starts over in center. Uh, recent decisions by the district attorney on trace evidence may actually put more <coughs> in jail over there. And all of that has an impact on uh, what we need to construct. We have our, our commitment of money available, and we are in conversation. Oh, well, actually, actually, when you're talking about, <laughs> well, when you're talking about the, uh, putting some type of limitations on precious metals, is that already enacted, or is it still something that you're going to propose? No, process? we have a proposed ordinance that uh, went to, it was on the agenda today, it was uh, delayed for a week, 